Hi, this is Frank here with Die Hard RC Addicts, and today we're going to be doing the setup of the radio and Open Pilot CC 3D board on this mini little 250 size quadcopter that we got from banggood.com. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is set up the radio and transmitter in the mini quadcopter. I've got my Turnigy 9X with a FR Sky module and receiver. As you can see, I've already set up a new model in the Turnigy 9X. You want this to be a fresh model with default settings. I also have the cable set from the CC3D board already plugged into the receiver. You want to make sure that channel 1 is plugged into the leads that have the positive and negative along with the signal. The rest of the signal cables will be plugged in in order. One last thing before we plug the cable set into the CC3D board, make sure that the receiver is bound to the Turnigy 9X radio. Here I have the receiver mounted temporarily on the top of the mini quad and I've got the cable run down through the inside and plugged into the side of the CC3D board. Next we need to check and make sure that the ESCs are all plugged in in the correct order. Here we can see all four ESC cables plugged into the control board. They're in order from front to back or number one through number four. And from the top of the quad we'll look at the order. The order of being plugged in, the front left hand side is plugged into number one. The front right hand side is plugged into number two. The rear right hand side is plugged into number three. And the rear left hand side is plugged into number four. I'd like to make a quick note here about the ESCs. If you're using ESCs that have built-in BECs that are switching BECs, you'll want to disconnect the red wire from three of the ESCs and leave one of them for powering it. These ESCs have normal analog BECs in them, so I'm going to go ahead and leave them all plugged in. Now we can move on to the setup of the OpenPilot CC3D board. The first thing we want to do before we get started with the CC3D board is to make sure you have the latest version of OpenPilot GCS, the ground control station. This is uh, version 14.10. Alright, we're going to start off by checking the firmware. So we can go down here to the bottom and click on firmware. And in order to upload the firmware, we have to make sure that the bootloader is up to date. So to check what version bootloader we have, we're going to hit rescue and follow the instructions. So I'll hit the rescue button. It says to plug in the USB to the computer. And it should find the board. It's found our board. And down here it'll tell you what version bootloader you have, BL version 4. I have the latest version on here because I've already flashed it. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I did it. Um, all the links to the programs that you'll need I'll be putting in the video information bar below. So I'm not going to go into detail about where to go to get these programs, so just check the video information bar. So I've already downloaded the latest bootloader uploader, so we're going to go to open. It's on a, it's on the desktop in a CC3D folder, and I've got bootloader number four. I click on this and open it, and now we're going to flash the, boot, the new bootloader on to the board, so you hit flash. And as you notice, the board is blinking blue. So it says to let the board blink till it stops blinking blue. And then give it an extra 10 or 15 seconds just to make sure it's done what it's doing. All right, when you're sure that it's done, we can go ahead and disconnect the board from the computer. All right, the board's disconnected. Now we're going to hit the rescue button again, and then we'll plug the board back in. Hit the rescue button. Plug the board back in. And if you had a different version in version 4, it would show the difference here. It's changed it from, say, you had version 3, it would go up to version 4. All right, so now that it's showing that, we have version 4 on there. The next thing we want to do is erase all the settings on the board because we're going to be setting it up. So we're going to come up to the erase settings. Click the erase settings. It's going to ask you if that's what you want to do. You just click OK. And it's running the erase. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and disconnect one more time. 
Okay, now we're going to auto update. So we hit the auto update button and it gives you time to plug in the USB again. And now it's uploading firmware to the board. It says board was updated successfully. Press OK to finish. And as you can see now, we have our telemetry showing. If we move the copter around, you can see everything is uh, working. All right, now we're done with the firmware upgrade. We're going to go ahead and move on to setting up the board. Now we're back on the welcome tab and we're going to use the vehicle setup wizard to set up what type of vehicle we're using with the board. You want to make sure that the board is plugged in and connected and it'll show it down here. So let's go ahead and double click on the vehicle setup wizard. It says to make sure that all the props are removed from the vehicle before proceeding. And as you can see, I've taken all the props off. Let's go ahead and hit next. It's asking to upgrade the firmware. We've already done that, so we can skip this. The next part is open pilot board identification. It should tell you the board that you have here is correct. It's the open pilot copter control board 3D. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. And this is the input signal. I'm going to be using the normal PWM input so I'm going to leave it on there but if you were going to change it to PPM or S bus or something you can click on one of the other ones to set it up that way so let's go ahead and hit next here we select the type of vehicle that we're going to be using we're using a multi rotor so it's already selected we'll hit next and here's the drop down menu for the type of multi rotor that you're using I checked the H copter earlier but it's actually a hexacopter so I'm going to go ahead and select the closest one which is a X configuration quadcopter and we'll hit next actually before we go it shows you here also the rotations of the props so you might want to look at that just to note it so we'll hit next and this is where we select the type of ESC we're using these are Simon K ESC's so they have a high refresh rate so we're gonna leave it on rapid ESC which is rated up to 490 Hertz click next and then it just gives you the open pilot configuration summary of the things that you've selected everything looks good we're gonna go ahead and hit next alright for this next one is to calibrate the sensors you wanna make sure that you use some kind of level and make the quadcopter as level as possible and then hit calculate and it will calculate all the sensors It says it's done over here, so we can hit next. And for this one, you definitely want to make sure you have the propellers disconnected. You have to click on all three of these boxes and then hit the start button first before you plug in the battery because it's going to set the high and low points for the ESCs. So we hit start, then we're going to plug in the power. and it shows the high point here hit stop and it'll move it to the low point of the ESC the number is changing when it's done you can uh, hit next and then we're gonna unplug it and reboot it for the next part of this setup again here it's telling you make sure you have the props off the quadcopter and here we're going to be setting the starting points for each individual motor and this is where you can check the rotation it shows motor one should be going clockwise hit the start button and bring up the throttle just till the motor starts moving then hit stop and hit next and it shows motor two should be counterclockwise you want to double check when it's spinning that it's spinning the correct way do the same thing hit start bring the throttle up 
hit stop, go to next for motor number three, which is clockwise, hit start, bring the throttle up, hit stop, hit next for the last one, which is motor number four, and it's going to be counterclockwise, start, bring the throttle up, hit stop. All right, and then hit next. All right, here we're gonna be setting the initial timing settings. They have some pre-configured ones in here. The closest one to this that I've seen in here is gonna be the QAV250, which is a little uh, mini 250 size H-style quadcopter. So we'll select that one and hit next. And now it's gonna save the settings. So hit save to save all your settings. Alright, it's saved, it says done, hit next again. And next will be the transmitter setup wizard for setting up the radio. Now we're back on the welcome tab and before we get started setting up the radio transmitter we're going to go ahead and turn it on make sure that it's connected with the receiver. Once that's done we can go down to the bottom here to the configuration tab, click on that and we want to select the input tab, the one that looks like a small transmitter. And then here it shows the setup of the transmitter. And this is one of the nice things I do like about the Open Pilot GCS, as we could plug in all the cables in order. And then here we select the channels, what they do. So we just go down this list here, throttle. And you can use the drop down menu to pick the channel that your throttle is on. Mine is on channel 3. For the roll, I'm using channel 1. The pitch, channel 2 yaw channel 4 and for the flight mode switch I want to use my three position switch which is on channel 6 so that's what I have it set the other uh, switches I'm not going to use I'm going to leave them disabled right now I just want to use it for flight mode only so we'll just leave it like that and now we can start the transmitter setup wizard by clicking this button and it pops up saying that the arming settings are now set to always disarmed for your safety uh, we'll go ahead and change that setting later, but right now it's set that way so you won't accidentally arm the quadcopter. So we'll click OK. And then this screen just says to follow the instructions and hit Next when you're done with each step. So we'll go ahead and hit the Next button. And here we're going to choose your transmitter type. It's selected as Acro Mode, Normal Transmitter for Fixed Wing and Quadcopter. This is what we want to use, so we're going to go ahead and leave it there. Hit next. And then here it says to choose your transmitter mode. In the US we use mode 2, so I'm going to leave it on mode 2. If you're in a different country, you can set it to the mode that you're used to. We're going to hit next. Here it says please move each control one at a time according to the instructions and pictures below. So it's moving that stick, so let's move this up and down. The next stick side to side, up and down, and this one side to side, and now it's showing the three position switch moving. Alright, and we didn't set up the other switches, so we can just hit next to skip them. Now it's saying to center all the sticks and the switch so that one's centered we'll center the switch hit next now it says please move all controls to their maximum extents on both directions and it's also showing the switch so let's flip the switch it says hit next and then it says here, please check the picture below and correct the all sticks which show the inverted movement. So if your movement is the opposite, you can reverse the channels here. So let's check them. I've already have my pitch checked as reverse because it was set up backwards. But you want to make sure that the stick movements are the same as what it shows on the screen. Alright, so now we can go ahead and hit next. 
says we've completed the wizard please check below if the picture mimics your stick movements so everything should be correct now everything's moving in the right direction check the switch it all looks good so we can hit next and now this is the part where we change the arming settings it's set to always disarmed so we use a drop down menu and select the one that you like the best um, I like yaw right so that's what I'm going to set mine at and here is the timeout for after it's armed where it will shut off you can set it in seconds originally it was set at 30 seconds but I thought that was a little bit long so I changed mine to 15 and then after you've got these settings set you just hit the save button and it saves it to the board and that pretty much is it we're all set up and ready to test fly it now oh one last thing you do want to hit the disconnect button to disconnect it from the radio all right let's go ahead and uh, take it outside for a test flight all right, we're ready to do the test flight of the new little mini quadcopter I got from banggood.com. I had to put a counterweight in the front, so I added this little man and added some little lead weights in there. It weighs about 75 grams to counterweight the battery on the back. So let me get it all plugged in, and we'll do the first test flight. All right, we're all plugged in, and to arm it, I'm just going to push it down on the throttle stick to the right, and it's armed now. And that was just me bumping the throttle, so let's go ahead and see how this goes. This is all stock settings. And you see how it does. It looks pretty stable. That's uh, the default settings. The only thing I've changed is on my radio. I set the throttle curve to have a little bit of a flatter area near the center. Because this doesn't have a barometer on it. I didn't want it to be too touchy. It looks like it's pretty good though. And that's just the stock settings that we set it on earlier. It does still feel just a little touchy on the throttle. Let's check the auto level. Looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Got some pretty good uh, juice to it. Do that again. You got, you got it in frame yeah, ball? Yeah. Pretty jumpy, man. Alright, this is going to conclude the setup portion of the build for this uh, little mini quad. I'm going to be doing another video with more flight testing. Today I just wanted to make sure that it flew okay after setting it up with stock settings. I want to say thanks guys for tuning in to Die Hard RC Addicts. And please be sure to check all the links below this video. I'll have links to all the software that we use for this. And also the quad parts that we use to build it. And please be sure to check out uh, banggood.com who was uh, nice enough to send us this little mini quad. Thanks again guys and see you again soon.